بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم سورہ راد چیپٹر 13 ورسز 39 ٹو 43 دیز آر دا ریفرنسز اینڈ دس از آر کانٹیکٹ ری کیپ سو فار وٹ ہیو ڈن اوور ہیئر از گون تھرو سم آف دا پوائنٹس وچ یو ہیو آلریڈی کورڈ بٹ آئی تھاٹ اٹ از گڈ ٹو ریمائنڈ آر سیلس دیٹ وٹ از کنٹین ان دس سورہ سو فار دا قرآن از الحق and contains details of the system of rububiyat for the good of the whole of mankind for example quran says wallazi unzila alayka min rabbikal haqq so both words rab and haq have appeared in this verse which indicates that it has been sent as a system of rububiyat and it is al haq next one is in order to reach this al haq we need to look at the signs in the outer world and come to this conclusion that there is a great purpose behind the creation of adam possessing choice and intent in the universe uh, we have gone over it because uh, and and the important point is that because quran is al haq we have to look for al haq everywhere whether it is the physical world or it is human psychic world or our own inner thought process next is bani adam is given finite time to live in this worldly life to make a choice between following either their own desires and intellect outside the guidance of wahi or the permanent values of wahi the quran the law of requital will help them to create a world according to their choice we know that we are here for a limited time which is tied to our physical life so once we die our stay in this world will end So it is important that since we have limited time that we look at this available time and see how best we can deal with it. What should be the best choices we should make and Quran helps us to make best choices. Allah does not change the state of a people until they change the state of their inner psyche. We are gone over it in detail. It is their choice. So whatever choice we make in life, our path will be accordingly set out right in front of us the moment we will change change our choice we will have a different path this world is an arena of making choices and then living with the consequences of these choices so it is important for us as students of the quran that at every moment and every place in our life we look at it that what choices are available to us and which is the best choice in the light of the quran and then we will see that how life will pan out in front of us as defined by the Quran. If human beings keep their choices within the guidance of Wahi, then what is best for mankind will materialize very quickly. This is based on the permanent value of what is best for mankind remains on earth. We remember that, that the best will come out in case we do the best. If we don't do it, then we will not get the best. Through the obedience of the Quran, Mu'mineen will achieve contentment of heart, i.e. freedom from fear and grief. This is in relation to the system of deen. It is important that we do not satisfy ourselves emotively that by doing certain rituals, we feel very happy and satisfied. Or being the beneficiaries of the capital system, we think that I am very contented because my needs are met. If we are living in a world which is not Quranic, which is non-deen, and there are people suffering, then it is our task that we do. make an effort to remove fear and grief fear and grief is a natural default status of a non quranic system when we acquire iman we enter into a covenant with allah and we need to make ourselves aware of finer details of this covenant individually as well as collectively next is the integrity of the quran as a system of guidance is absolute and nothing can ever be mixed with its teachings If we do this, then this is committing shirk and we will not get its benefits. In nutshell, we know that shirk means contaminating the Quranic guidance with man-made ideas, with external uh, things which do not belong to the Quran. The moment we do that, then we will not get the benefits of the Quran. Because essentially, it is human mind, human thought, human decision-making, human choices which are going to transform the world. And if that thinking... and that state of cognition is contaminated then the outcome will also be contaminated so this is something which we should keep reminding ourselves all the time we need to continuously evaluate our selves and also look at the conduct of others using the criteria described in the quran the quran draws our attention to numerous aspects of the human character so that we can educate train experience and develop ourselves we need this developed self to make sense of the world in which we live
if we have acquired that Quran itself, which is based on Iman, then we will automatically see the world differently as compared to those who do not have Iman. And for us, it is very easy to judge it and evaluate it, assess it. That what was our outlook before we came to the Quran and what this outlook has become after coming to the Quran. If we find there is no difference between the two, then of course we have to revisit Iman and look at the Quran again and again and discuss with those who can differentiate between the two clearly. Law for the rise and fall of nations. Verse 13, 39. The verse says, Yamhullahu ma yashau wa yusbitu wa indahu ummul kitab. Absolutely brilliantly summed up in few words in this verse, the law of rise and fall of nations. And we can check it through evidence. The meaning is whichever nation, ideology of life or system of life does not have the capability that it should prevail, it becomes erased according to the law of Allah. And whichever proves itself to be strong and balanced according to the law of Allah, it is allowed to endure. In terms of nations, it is in our hand that what kind of a nation we want. The nation which should last for a shorter period or should last for a very, very long time. This all takes place according to those fundamental laws which Allah has established along with the creation of the universe and according to which its organization and execution is taking place. Now, I put down some further points on this, further reflections on verse 13, 39. The first is, the verse mentions Allah at the beginning, meaning that all divine attributes are applicable in what is being stated here as a permanent value. So in rise or fall of nations, it is Allah mentioned right at the beginning. So all his attributes are in it. Because Rahim, Rahman, Aziz, Hakim, all those uh, attributes, some of which we have gone through are now covering this particular law. What is meant to be removed and erased by Allah, i.e. his law will do this. Hence, it is important for us to know this so that we can re-benefit from its knowledge. Firstly, by not doing that which can harm us. And secondly, evaluating others. This can help to define Ajal. We know Ajal means that time of respite of the decline of nations, that how much time a nation has between its success and failure. So that is something which we should keep it in mind. What is meant to be established is also defined in detail, and we can acquire evidence through our efforts by keeping these values in mind. In today's world, there is no dearth of information, though we need to be aware of human biases in these studies and researches. So the point over here is that when we are studying this aspect under this law, we should never ever let our mind be biased and put our own opinions into it. Because if, for example, we know we like some nation or like some leaders who are non-Quranic, if we introduce our own biases in it, then we, will, we are going to go wrong. In connection with this verse, we need to bear in mind 1317, where Quran said, That is what is good for mankind, that remains enough. If you remember, there were two metaphors used in that verse. If human hands join the cosmic forces, then cause events to accelerate and acquire shorter time scales. It's our choice either to accept the status quo of the man-made system and live under its slavery or take up the challenge and get Allah's help. At least we know the procedure and the laws of Allah. Tulu Islam's literature covers all these aspects in detail. What I've done over here is that I put down the gist of it because sometimes we get frustrated that despite making an effort, for example, reading all the literature which Alama Pervez has written and also reading on numerous books, right, left and center, on world problems, still there is not any progress being made. The power is not coming in our direction. That means that we haven't reached the minimum threshold. And that does not mean to give it up and run away and go somewhere else. Once we have made a decision to come on this path, the path of Sarat and Mustaqeen, the established path, the balanced path, then we should keep it in mind that it doesn't matter whether the things start taking shape during our life or not, we should continue persisting because our direction is right, our destination is right. So that is something which we should keep it in mind, but at the same time, we should keep thinking as well. In the verse 42-24, the term Al-Haq elaborates what is needed to be established. 
So the same wording initially is used as in this verse 1339. Over here, the words of Allah come in that haq, its words, its kalimat are going to get established. So uh, when we compare the two, batil and haq, we should keep that in mind. Towards the end, the Quran concludes by sta stating to us, in the Ummul Kitab. There are laws governing the universe, and if we know these, then essentially we can get the best out of it under the guidance of Allah's book. So Kitab also we know means laws. So what is what is being directed in this life, even if it is through human hands, we should keep it in mind that how these laws are working. For example, this verse 3, 7 says, Ho allazi anzala alaykal kitaba min ho ayatum muhkamatum hunna ummul kitab. So Quran says that there are two types of verses. There are muhkamat and metaphors. And we can always figure it out that which are muhkamat. Because metaphors, we used one in, in, in our previous uh, presentation. Quran has used that some of the abstract realities and some metaphors for explaining those matter for reality. So muhkamat are which are established. We can understand them. We can see the evidence of those working in our life. We have seen the precision of Quranic guidance and we'll come to know more about it later. Now next verse is 1340. Events in human life at precise scales. Those things about which they are being promised are in any case going to take place. It is possible that some matters may occur before your own eyes, and it is also possible that you may die before this. And so you should not speculate on when these results will manifest. Your task is to keep passing on this code of guidance to the people. It is our task to see when the outcomes appear according to our law. Very interesting and a powerful verse in many respects for us. It is addressed initially to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and now it is addressed to each one of us, the students of the Quran. That results, getting the results right in our lifetime is not our problem. The Quran over here is pointing to different scaling wor working in our life. If you remember uh, Yusuf's life where he was sitting in a prison and still he was fully confident that my efforts will not go wasted. Similarly, our outlook should be that our efforts will not go wasted. Our job is what is explained in this verse. And we will look at some of these points next. Verse 1340, this verse requires a profound reflection. Understanding the functioning of the law of requital is important as it helps us to evaluate the events taking place around us. Since the revelation of the Quran was gradually heading towards its completion, hence this verse guided the jamaat e mumineen towards the immutability of the law of This verse assured them that results will materialize in direct proportion to their efforts. Through this verse, and I think there is another verse uh, parallel with that, that they understood that over here, if we keep following the path which we are following, in fact, this verse is proving to us because we have understood it that our path is right. We are in Sarat Mustaqim. If we understand the way this the way Allah has explained to us. This also makes it clear for all times that the fundamental duty of the Jumat e Mumineen is to pass on the message as widely as possible and at the same time to keep doing solid deeds. Fa'innama alaikal blah absolutely brilliantly summed up our duty when the system of deen has not yet been established. This sums it up for us in Tulu Islam not to become impatient and disheartened. So if some of us, if any of us is at any moment feels frustrated or goes into despair, which is actually the state of the mind, we have to overcome it by saying, have we passed the message to everyone in the world? Have we explained it to them? Do I understand the way Allah wants me to understand and then explain it to others? And these talks which we are sharing with each other is part of that process of understanding the finest details of the Quran in present day world. Of course, these things will change as the time will pass. Verse 2 to 14 states, further illustrates the challenges of this path. Quran says, Am hasibtum an tadkulul jinnata wa jinnata wa lam yaatikum matlul lazina khalao min kablikum masatuhumul basao wa darrao wa zulzalu hatta yakula rasulu wal lazina amanu mahu matanasrullah 
Allah inna nasrullahi nasrullahi free. So over here, Quran says that you are you want to enter paradise, you want to create a paradise in this world, and you haven't even made that kind of efforts. You haven't faced that kind of efforts with previously people faced. They they faced lot of problems. Basai, wadarai, wazulzulu, such earth shaking uh, trials and tribulations come to, came to them that. Rasul and and his uh, companions, his Sahaba, they said those who had iman that where is Allah's help? When will it come? And we also have those kind of a thoughts. Allah inna nasr Allah kareem. Quran says you are on the shortest path possible in human life on which you are. The results are very close by. So it's a greatly reassuring. This verse is concluding itself. Nasr Allah kareem that it is very very close because. law of requital is working very efficiently we are going through a transitory period of getting educated trained and learning the process of the self development the quran here emphatically points to this fact that the path to the system of deen does not follow our wishes i e our desire to get quick results overcoming this tendency of our mind to get quick results is part of self development so this is something which we should keep in mind and secondly we will see that as we progress through this education and training of ourselves that every time we go through these verses some new aspect comes before us by stating our align al hisab the quran sums it up saying that we are there to take cognizant of everything which is taking place in your world it's a great reassurance from allah the quran has explained it all i e allah's laws are taking account of everything and if the results have not yet appeared as expected it means that firstly we have not yet fully understood the functioning of the law of requital secondly our self has not reached that developed state where we understand the attributes of a self which can manage the system of being thirdly the system requires not one or two people with developed selves but needs many more with highly developed selves fourthly if the message has not been adequately and effectively communicated to the wider public then we should not expect it to be implemented quickly as opposition to the system will be based on an inadequate understanding by the masses around it so important that if we haven't passed on the message to everyone or to the wider public or majority in the world then even if the system starts germinating somewhere it will have tremendous opposition because the system requires rational thinking and reasoning of other human beings and if we have non rational thinkers around us who are not willing to reason and not willing to look at it from that perspective is the quran is asking us to pass it on to them then we have a problem because everything follows laws and the law says that if majority if the people do not come to the quran then we have to look at it that how to pass on the message to everyone so that at least we meet that permanent value where we have warned the public we have warned the world Next is the law of requital manifests its signs in the human world. Thirteen forty-one. Over here, the Quran says, "Avalam yarau anna naatil arda nan kosuha min atrafiha. Wallahu yahkumu la mu akkebale hukmehi wa huwa siriul hisab." Another very interesting evidence presented before us, right in the world where we are living, that which they are constantly demanding that when will the system of rububiyat be established in which their individual interests will end. do they not see how by seizing land and the means of production out of the hands of big land lords we keep reducing their possessions in the same way there will arrive a day when there will be nothing left in their hands all will become available for mankind this is the decision of allah and regarding the decision which allah makes there is no power in the world which can avert those decisions he is very swift in accountability now i put down some reflections here and uh, we can always add more to it in this verse the quran is drawing our attention to a continuously changing landscape of the human world especially the world organized by the human intellect so we can see the world around us it's not a boring world even if we are in sometimes we get frustrated or not happy but these states keep changing sometimes there will be we will see that uh, things are changing in that direction in which we would like it to go and sometimes these do not so there is a continuous flux taking place around us 
since the law of reportal works continuously whether on its natural time scale or on human hand driven time scale these changes can be perceived by chronic selves and we have pointed out to these facts many times and we have seen that the world around us is changing and we are keeping an eye on those changes man outside the outside of the guidance of way is fully focused on the successes attributed to physical life and its conveniences and we do get distracted as well because we see that the world which is created by human intellect is of course very powerful and there are a lot of conveniences created but there are a lot of problems as well the quran calls it a mirage and a path of self deception now this is a great education and training for us that we know what deen is like but we have we haven't seen the physical side of it we haven't seen the system on ground and now we have to create that system within our mind within our perception and compare it with the world in which we are living so it's a great challenge here it points to this fact that nations keep changing geographically in terms of their land mass and we can see that how the map of the world is changing even with these well defined countries as of today and if we look at about 20 years ago there are more countries being added some are disintegrating some are coming together those who are powerful add to their land mass while those who are weak and feeble due to their own deeds keep on be- becoming squeezed so quran has pointed to this fact that you should keep it an eye on the ever changing map of your world in a short span time of a average human being like 50 60 years of consciousness we can see tremendous changes so we can imagine over a thousand years what a world will look like from now we witness this clearly in front of us in today's world and human history is also witness to these dynamics so this should give us assurance that quranic laws are working even if there is no jamaat e mu'minin at this point in time even if there is no model of deen anywhere in the world all this happens because the law of allah pursues its goal incessantly and without any favor to anyone whoever follows the law or decides to go against it the result comes out as noted in the quran the beauty of the quran is that it expresses the realities in a language which does not have monotony and is related to the truth wallahu yahkumu la muwakkibal hikmahi and then follows this fact by declaring wa huwa sariul hisab so even if we see we have seen these verses and the various facets of law of requital and the various ways the quran expresses the same law there is no monotony in that there is always a beauty and there is always some addition to to the law of requital and some of its aspects in every verse so over here when quran says you should not be in despair because wa huwa sariul hisab the one who is keeping the account of it is very quick we just make sure that we join with him he swift in accountability because the initially invisible consequences of every deed immediately become established and joins up with other previously committed deeds these effects follow each one of us relentlessly without any break so we should keep it in mind that all this what presently the leaders and elite are doing in this world all of that is getting accumulated and once it reaches a point of inflection then we will see rapid changes taking place in the world the verse provides repeated assurance to mu'minin that if we remain on this path then things will be taken care of by the laws of allah our task is to remain focused and keep increasing the vastness of our consciousness through solid deeds and by uniting our hearts by coming together and keeping on strengthening our collective efforts never ever give up as giving up means that we have rejected iman so this is important never ever give up as giving up means that we have rejected iman and getting iman accepting iman understanding iman is the paradigm shift in our life because our hereafter depends on that and if we reject it we move away from that that means we have ruined our hereafter we have absolutely got out of the benefits of the hereafter so if we have held on to the rope of allah then we have no business to leave it this will lead to the destruction of all our efforts in this life and there will be nothing in the hereafter and the quran declares this to be kufr and quran says ulaika alladhina kafaru bi ayati rabbihim wa liqaihi fahabitat amaluhum fala nuqimu lahum yawmal qiyamati wasana and we know habitat amaluhum means that those things which appear very positive we think that we have a great uh, life over here in terms of conveniences of this life 
But if we look at it deep down through the lens of the Quran, we will see underneath there is nothing in our self. If the self is thinking on those lines, that self is literally dead while it is living a physical life. The next verse is 1342, another permanent value for a profound reflection. وَقَدْ مَكَرَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ عَلِ اللَّهِ الْمَكْرُ شَمِيًّا يَعْلَمُوا مَا تَقْسِبُوا كُلُّ نَفْسٍ فَسَيَعْلَمُ الْقُفْقَارُ لِمَنْ أُقْبَدْدَارُ Even before them, there were groups with vested interests. Many great plots were attempted so that the decisions of Allah should not be implemented, but not one of these tricks of anyone succeeded. Their plots kept producing results according to the laws of Allah. The truth is that whatever any individual does, Allah is well aware of it. Hence, those who deny the laws of Allah will soon find out who will ultimately triumph and what will, that, will be the end of each. Some further reflections on this verse, 1342. What is stated here is frequently quoted in the religious domain, but without knowledge of its wider meaning. When things don't go in their favor, religious people state that Allah is the best of planners. Without going into the details that this planning has to be carried out by human beings. So Quran over here is pointing to us that Allah is the best of planners, of course, through trial and tribulations, what is taking place, trial and error, which is taking place in the world. But if Jamaat Mumin joins it, then they will be able to accelerate the pace of the plan of Allah. No doubt he is the best of planners, but this planning gets planned and executed through the hands of Jamaat al mumineen If there is no Jamaat in the first place which represents the Quranic teachings, then how is this going to take place? So that's the question we should keep asking. Only chaos and more conflict will appear in the world. Next is this verse addresses the mumineen of the earlier era and of all subsequent eras to note that by following the Quranic values, we need to keep in mind that since our plans meet the permanent values of the Quran and we manifest the divine attributes. So both are our needs. First is that we should be working within the permanent values of the Quran and we should know in and out of it. And second is as many as possible, we should display, manifest these divine attributes even in the world of today. Hence, this planning will be executed by those who are models of these values. Hence, Allah's plan will hold true. Then the Quran reinforces it by saying, Yalamu ma taqsibu kullu nafsin. Again, this is uh, the way Allah is projecting the law of requital over here because Allah knows everything. We are implementing our plan under the direct guidance of Allah. Essentially, a kafir, a mushrik, a manafik doesn't want to know this. This particular part of the verse is absolutely directly uh, addressing us, those who are the students of the Quran, who knows every deed of ours and the motive behind it. So it is important for us to remain cognizant of this fact and not to become distracted. Distraction weakens our resolve and our self becomes affected. So if we get distracted, wherever we get distracted, we should try to find out the, the explanation behind it. That why did my mind think like that despite being the student of the Quran? And we will see that our resolve will become strengthened once we solve that knot, once we solve that important point which the mind is putting to us. By concluding the verse with a declaration that فَسَيَعْلَمُ الْقُفَارُ لِمَنْ أُقْبَدَّارُ See, the word sa over here means that it will happen very quickly. If jamaat mumineen join in, in, in these efforts, then things become quicker. And kuffar are the ones who reject it, who think that this life has no purpose and the life ends with that. Soon will those who oppose it face the consequences of opposing this planning of Allah through the hands of mumineen whose hearts have been united. This declaration is, of course, a warning for Kufar, but also defines the state of affairs at this point in time of the campaign. Because once we come to this path and come together and try to, to, to increase our knowledge and we educate ourselves, train ourselves, develop ourselves, then we are on this path now. And gradually, as our understanding increases, for example, when we understand this part of the verse like that, then our Iman will become stronger and stronger. Soon they will know points to the fact that the efforts are going to materialize on a human time scale. So even understanding this part and then seeing it working in the world will strengthen our Imam. And finally, the last verse of uh, Surah, Surah Rad, acquiring the knowledge of the function of the book. 
موسیقی Now concluding Surah Raad, more reflections on this particular verse. Here, firstly, this fact is noted that when people do not think they are accountable for their deeds and also hold the reins of power, they think that nothing will come to pass about which the messenger is admonishing them. When human beings are in a position of power and they have acquired that power by, by being grossly unjust to others and they are still in that process of doing at extending tyranny to others, that means they are not going to come to the message of the Quran. But essentially, when we give the message, we are warning them. So that process accelerates of the consequences of their deeds. This is the end of their existence as human beings possessing a self. So here the Quran guides us by saying that those who reject its guidance will get, give us this response. So Quran is essentially telling us that when we give that message, a lot of people will say that I don't think what is given in the Quran is true. Or these are the stories of the, the ancient people. There is nothing in the Quran. And I've heard these kind of comments even from those who claim to be Muslims. So this is nothing new, which essentially means that such people are not looking for guidance. But when I have given the message or we have given the message, that means we have strengthened our own resolve. We have strengthened our own iman. And also we have known what kind of an opposition we should expect in the future. Then Allah has noted another fact by saying that he himself is a witness to this as all this is under his direct watch and nothing escapes it. A great assurance for us. And then Quran says Allah being a witness also means that we need to learn to be a witness on others. To be aware of the state of affairs around us and in the world. The Quran has asked us to play this role. The Quran says, for example, in Surah Hajj, Le yakuna rasoolo shahidan alaikum wa takunu shuhada al nas That Rasool, Rasoolullah at that time was a witness on you. And of course, he brought a message. So Rasool means that the message which is brought that is becoming a witness on us. So Quran is a witness on us. Quran is the one which provides guidance on us, which becomes a guardian on us, which becomes a criterion for us. So we take guidance from it. And then what Akunu Shohadal and Nas, then we become witnesses on others in the light of what Quran has taught us. With a developed self, then we we evaluate others. And while we are evaluating others, of course we are continuously evaluating our own conduct, our own self as well. Next is by stating one man in the who ilmul kitab, absolutely brilliant part of this verse applicable to us. We are asked to become one possessing the knowledge of the book of Allah to be able to explain to others the significance of our existence as human beings, the problems in the world around us, and the alternative system and its details as we know them. So what Quran is saying that go and ask someone who knows it. So that means if I know it, then someone should come to me. So all these students of the Quran on, on Blue Islam platform should are those models to whom people should come and ask for guidance. And if we don't know, we know we got the books, we can always consult them. This places the onus on us and increases our responsibility, which we have accepted willingly and happily. So it is not a burden on us. If we think it is a burden, then we should rethink and rethink and rethink till the time this provides us reassurance and makes us happy. If we remember in, in previous uh, presentation, we said that Quran has said that you should be very happy that we have sent, given you this book and all that you accumulate in your life is nothing as compared to what we have given you, as it has given us new life. And if we don't, if 
cannot recognize that new life within us, then we should think again and again. We should discuss among ourselves. We should go back to the Quran and, and look at it. We should read the books again and again and see where we have missed the boat, where we are not understanding it properly. And this provides an incentive and motivation to increase our knowledge as per the directive of Qul Rabbi Zidni Ilma. So all the time we should be making this dua that I'm going to increase my knowledge. And when I say knowledge is, or when the Quran says knowledge, it means the knowledge to which the Quran is direct, has drawn our attention. Of course, the, the Quran and of course what the human beings have created around us, that is also part of knowledge because human intellect is developing and through science and, and other sciences, it is uh, putting a lot of uh, light on those things which are not yet discovered and which are being discovered, which have already been discovered. Now, finally, we will look at some of the permanent values which are covered in this surah. These are the ones which I could pick up and I'm sure if all of us look at it, we can add more to it. If we, at the end of every surah which we go through and share together, if we put these permanent values mentioned in that surah, then at the end we should have a big... Uh, uh, you know, number of slides which can give us the complete picture of the constitution of the Quran. The state of a nation does not change until it changes its psyche. If we remember, this was covered in 1311. <speaking in Hebrew> what is good for mankind remains on earth. <speaking in Hebrew> We enter into a covenant with Allah in exchange of deen. So whenever we acquire Iman, that is the beginning of a new life within us. That is the beginning of a covenant with Allah. Allah who has created everything, including you and me. Allazina yufuna bi'ahdillahi wala yankudun al And of course, this covenant is meaningless unless we know the final details of it. And then once we know the final details of it, then we should work together and act on them. Contentment of hearts depends on dhikr Allah. Alladheena amanu wa tatma inno kulubuhum de dhikr Allah. See, this is addressed to mu'mineen. This is addressed to the system of deen. This is a collective effort. It is not a single thing that if after saying my, some kind of a ritualized prayer or, or some kind of a hajj and umrah, I feel very contented that I've done my job. No, if that nothing changes in the world. And we haven't really come together as Muhammadi, then that is a false sense of contentment. Fear and Huzan becomes removed from through the Quran. So this also means that these people, Lazina Amanu, understand how to remove fear and grief and they make an effort to remove it. And until that is removed, we can't have Tatmain no Allah. But understanding the dhikr of Allah, that is essentially the Krukum Al Dhikr, then is part of it. So it's a holistic approach. It is not pick and choose. We choose a small part of the whole reality and think, oh, that is great. I've done my job because I'm a beneficiary of the, of the capitalist system and my life is fine. Rest can, I'm not responsible for that. Accountability of the human self, absolutely important. We had gone through it in detail in one of our presentations. Next is true happiness is defined as removal of dissonances. If you remember, Quran has said, Paul did self, the Quran is rahmat from Allah if its guidance is followed. So at a default level, we have cognitive dissonances. There are conflicts within our mind. In fact, if we have more than one belief, which is the Iman in Allah, and if we have others uh, in, in our mind, then we can't get rid of these dissonances without the Quran. So essentially, Quran is simplifying our cognition level. It is saying that you only need one Iman, one Allah, and his book as a guidance. And it's such a simplified life that it cannot be simplified more than that. It is the minimum threshold level to which Quran brings us to a very, very uh, simple way of thinking. Since human actions have consequences, hence there is a defined period of respite associated with these deeds, and this is called ajal. For every ajal, there is a law, lekulle ajal in kitab. So Quran over says that for every ajal, there is a kitab, there is a law, and we should understand it. And we have gone over, over a number of points, and more will uh, come before us as we progress through the Quran.
the rise and fall of nations is based on the law yamhullahu ma yasha wa yusbitu wa indahu ummul kitab so because we should never be discouraged and and disappointed or be in despair just because there is a big overwhelming battle around us and we should keep it in mind why this battle is there because people haven't looked at the quran the way we are looking at it they have looked at it as a book of religion and they the thought is literally static for centuries so this thought will take some time to come to life to come to fruition to to become to become lively again to become dynamic again and this takes time scales for human deeds can be figured out the quran has noted many causes for the decline of nations in the world and the last one is everything in the universe and the human world follows laws hence it is important to understand this aspect in detail and for this evidence for this evidence needs to be collected and analyzed on a continuous basis the quran draws our attention to this aspect by declaring wa qad makara allazina min qablihim falillahil makru makru jamian Allah's plan should be kept in mind. We should know the domain of Amr as explained in the Quran and domain of Khalq as well. And this is a permanent value because it does not change. Human beings do interfere because they have been allowed to interfere in this world. And the people who are there to stop them are the ones who are Jamaat-e Mu'minin. So both are going parallel. And those who are following the quran they should never ever think of giving up we can see iblis doesn't give up so why should mu'minin give up but this is not a great argument the argument is that haq is haq when we are on haq we should be absolutely sure that i understand the haq and i'm not going to give it up till the time i leave this world and with that thank you very much for your time and for sharing this presentation